What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here, coming at you with Samsung Galaxy A14 5G tips and tricks and hidden features. So stay tuned if you want to learn how to get the most out of your device. Now the first thing I want to show you is a quick and easy way to get to the camera app and you can do this from anywhere throughout the operating system. And all you have to do is just double press on the power button. So let's give that a try. And there we go, it pulled up the camera. And we can do this from other areas too. So we can go to the app drawer, for example, and double press on that power button. And again, it pulls up the camera very easily and conveniently. So that's a really great feature, but you can do even more with it as well. So we're gonna go to the settings. So pull down the notification shade, and then go to the gear icon in the upper right corner. Then from there, go to search, type in side, and you'll see right there side key. So go to side key, and you'll see right now by default, it does indeed have quick launch camera if you double press on the power button. Now, if you don't want double pressing on the power button to do anything, you can actually turn that off completely, or you can also have it activate any app of your choosing. So go to open app, and then go to the gear icon, and from there, you can pick any app on the device. So for example, let's say that you want it to pull up Spotify by just double pressing on the power button. I'll pick Spotify, and then now, it doesn't matter where I am throughout the phone, if I double press on that power button, it does pull up that app. So that's very convenient and certainly a very awesome feature. Now moving on, the next feature I want to show you is something called edge panels. So to get to this, you do have to go to the settings because it's not enabled by default. So go to the settings, go to search, type in edge, and you'll see right there edge panels. So go there, and then you'll see it right there. So go there, and then you can see it's not enabled. So enable that, and then now you'll see this little side notch on the side of the phone here. So essentially, from anywhere in the operating system, you can just swipe that over, and then it pulls up this whole side interface. Now this is the default configuration. You can see we have some different apps here, as well as some recent ones up here, but also there are some clusters of apps. So for example, for this one, it has a preset to pull up both YouTube and the web browser. So you can see by going here, it'll pull up a split screen configuration with those two apps. So that's super convenient. So definitely very awesome. Now, in addition to that, we can further customize this. So you can go to this gear icon to pull up the settings for this. And you can see we have a lot of different edge panel configurations. So the default shows pretty much apps or collections of apps. But if you want instead, it can show people, smart select, so different tools, tasks, weather, also, another tool panel, reminders, and then your clipboard. And there's even more options in the Galaxy Store. So this is very useful and definitely something that I recommend enabling and trying out. You can also go to this pen icon right there to further arrange the different icons that are located on the side. So there's really a limitless number of options. And then going back to the main edge panels area in the settings, you'll see an option right here that says handle. If you go there, you can actually change the position of the handle. So if you want on the left side, it'll move over there. If you want to lock it, you can lock it. You can also move it vertically as well. And if you want to pick the color of it too, there's a lot of different presets here, or you have the full color wheel and spectrum available for you. So if you want to make it blue, you can do that. So certainly a lot of different customizations. You can adjust the transparency. So more transparent or less transparent. You can also change the size of it too. So many different ways to customize this. Now the next thing I wanna show you is how to hide apps on the Samsung Galaxy A14 5G. Now essentially by hiding an app, what that means is that an app of your choosing will not show up on the home screen and it'll also not show up in the app drawer. So there might be certain apps that you still want on the phone, but you just don't wanna see them anywhere. So if that's the case, this feature probably is good for you. So to do this, you're going to go to the app drawer, go to the three dots in the upper right corner, and then go to settings. And then from here, you'll see hide apps on home and app screens. And then from there, you can pick any app and hide it. So for example, let's hide Facebook. So I'm going to choose Facebook. You can see it's already up here in the hidden apps. I'm going to go to done. And then now heading back to the home screen, Facebook is now missing. And then also in the app drawer, Facebook is nowhere to be found. So that app is now hidden. Now to bring it back, go to the same area here, go to the settings, go to hide apps, and then remove it from your hidden apps. And then after doing that, it will be back in the app drawer, but it won't be placed back on the home screen. So you will have to grab that app and then put it back to where it was if that's something that you wanna do. Now the next thing I wanna do is show you how to take a screenshot with the Samsung Galaxy A14 5G. Now to take a screenshot with this device, it is pretty simple. All you have to do is just hold down the volume down and power button for about a second, and then it'll take the screenshot, 
and then from there, you can edit it or share it. So pretty straightforward. Now with the Samsung Galaxy A14 5G, we have a very large display at 6.6 .6 inches. Now that's great when it comes to looking at content here on the phone, but if you wanna reach certain parts of the display, it can be very difficult, if not impossible, with just one hand. Now thankfully, Samsung has come up with a remedy to this problem, and it's called one-handed mode. Now to get to one-handed mode, you need to go to the settings, and then once you're there, go to search, and then type in one-handed, and you'll see it right there, one-handed mode, and then that's not enabled by default, but go to it, and then enable that, and then I prefer the button instead of the gesture, so I would choose button, and then essentially, if you double press on the home button, it'll shrink down the display. So that's very useful, and essentially we're getting a mini phone here. So you can do everything that you typically do on your device, it's just now smaller, and you can reach it all with just one hand. And then to get out of this, you just tap out of it. But in addition to that, there are some other customizations, so you can move it over to the other side instead. You can also grab onto the top here, and change it that way as well. And then you can also grab onto the corner here and change the sizing. So certainly a lot of customizations when it comes to one-handed mode, but overall, this is very useful and I'm a big fan of that feature. So I definitely recommend enabling it. Now the next thing I wanna show you are some various display settings when it comes to the Galaxy A14 5G. So we're gonna head over to the main settings page, then from there, go to display, and then from here, I'll show you a couple of things. The first thing is, you can choose between light and dark mode, so if you want to do dark mode, that's certainly very useful, especially at nighttime or maybe you're in a movie theater, so give that a try if you want. And then also, you can set a schedule for dark mode too. So if you only want dark mode when it's nighttime, for example, you can set that up, so they're useful. Another thing I want to show you too is motion smoothness. So this device does feature a 90 hertz refresh rate, so that does make everything a lot smoother when going through the phone. It certainly gives it a lot more of a premium feel. However, that does use some battery. So if you want to kind of conserve your battery a little bit, you can always switch to 60 hertz instead, and then things won't be quite as smooth here, but in return, you might slightly prolong your battery life. So certainly something worth considering, but I certainly do prefer the 90 hertz refresh rate. There's also Eye Comfort Shield, so by going here, it will essentially block out a lot of the blue light. That's especially important towards the end of the day. You can have this on all the time, or you can set a schedule, and you can also customize the color temperature, which is very useful as well. So I definitely recommend giving that a try. Also, we have font size and style. So if you want a bigger font or a different looking font, you can make those choices. You can even download some fonts as well. So certainly a lot of different customizations here with the Galaxy A14 5G. You can also adjust the screen timeout. So by default, I believe it's either 30 seconds or a minute. I did set the screen timeout to 30 minutes because I've been making a lot of videos about this phone, but I certainly recommend trying different screen timeout times to see what best suits you. And then another option here too is the navigation bar. So let's go there. So there's a couple of different options. The first thing is, if you wanna switch the back button and recent apps buttons around, you can do that. So you can now have the back button on the left side and recent apps on the right side. And then another option here too, is gesture-based navigation. Now I know many people who watch this channel actually prefer the three-button Android navigation that's been around almost since the beginning, but if you want gesture navigation instead, kind of similar to what you find with many of the iPhones that are out, you can do that. So when you go to there, you can see we now have a little bar at the bottom here, but swiping all the way up will take you home, swiping partially up will take you to recent apps, and then swiping from the side will take you back. So that really comes down to personal preference for which one you would prefer. But if you've never tried gesture-based navigation, I certainly recommend at least giving it a try. Also, you can go over to more options here and you can choose this option, which is swipe from bottom. And it's kind of like a hybrid between the two. So you don't have the giant bar at the bottom taking up a lot of space, but essentially if you swipe up from the middle, you go home. If you swipe up from the left side here, it'll take you to recent apps and then swiping up from the right side will take you back. So also kind of a different option here and a little bit different from the other two. Now I already gave you a little bit of a preview to split screen earlier, but I wanna show you another cool way to get to it. So again, to kind of clarify, split screen is when you have one app up top and then another app on the bottom. So a fast and easy way to get to split screen is actually go to your recent apps here, and then you do have to have both apps kind of pulled up, but in this example, we're gonna put YouTube up top here and then Chrome at the bottom. So all you have to do is just hold on to the icon, and then from there, it'll set that up, and then you'll pick your secondary app, and then it'll give you a full list of your various apps. So I'll choose Chrome, and then now you can see it's a 50-50 split. Now if you want one app to be larger and another to be smaller, you can actually adjust this bar, 
and change it just like that. So you can easily browse the web here while also watching a video. So they're useful. Or if you want one of them to take over completely, you can drag one of the apps completely one way or the other. So it's certainly very easy there. It makes a lot of sense. Now, another option here is pop-up view. So essentially with pop-up view, it's like you get a little app within the whole user interface. So I want to do pop-up view here with the web browser. So you'll do the same thing, hold onto the app icon, but instead of dropping it right up top here to open it in split screen, you're going to move it down to the middle and you'll see right there, drop here for pop-up view. So I'll drop it right there and you can see we have a mini web browser now. So you can see we have the whole operating system right here, but at the same time, the web browser is floating over it. Then from there, you can actually tap on this little blue bar and we'll have some other options. One of them is transparency. So if you want to see a little bit of the app, but also to see what's behind it, you can do that. You can also change that all the way back to how it was. And then also over here, you can shrink it down even more or you can expand it all the way. So I'll shrink it down. And essentially we get this little kind of bubble here on the side. So if you wanna quickly get back to that, you can just tap on it right there. But if you wanna get out of this screen, you can tap up here and do that. So anyway, a lot of different options and a lot of ways to multitask here on the Galaxy A14 5G. Now the next thing I want to show you is how to get more battery life out of your Samsung Galaxy A14 5G. So we're going to go to the settings and then from here go to search, type in battery and then go there and you'll see quite a bit of information here related to the battery usage and everything. But we're going to go to power saving and essentially there's a lot of options related to power saving mode. So the first thing is you can enable it right there with the defaults. It'll change the refresh rate to 60 hertz. It'll also cut out some different background tasks as well. But in return for that, you will get better battery life with your phone. Now, I don't recommend enabling power saving mode all the time. I'd really only save it for situations where you know you won't be able to easily recharge the phone anytime soon, but at least it is there for you. And then you can also further customize it as well. So you can have it limit CPU speed to 70%, which is the default. It'll also decrease brightness by 10%. And if you want to as well, you can have it limit apps and home screen. So definitely a lot of Ways here to save your battery. Also in this battery area, if you scroll down, you'll see more battery settings. And if you go there, you'll see that many of these are already enabled by default, but there is one other one that says protect battery. So if you enable that one, it'll extend the lifespan of your battery, but in return, it'll limit the maximum charge to 85%. So by doing that, you are technically losing out on 15% of your battery at all times, but at the same time, It'll prolong the life of your battery, which means that it won't degrade quite as fast. Now, the next feature I want to show you is called Dual Messenger. And essentially, Dual Messenger allows you to install multiple copies of the same app. But it only works for certain apps that are compatible. But let me show you. So go to your settings, go to search, type in Dual, and you'll see it right there, Dual Messenger. And then go there, and essentially any app that is compatible that's already installed onto the phone will show up here. And you can see out of the ones I've installed, it does support Snapchat. Facebook, and Messenger. So I know Snapchat, for example, doesn't actually allow multiple accounts to be signed in on the same copy of the app. So unlike other apps like Instagram, for example, where you can easily switch between users, Snapchat doesn't allow that. So essentially with this dual messenger, it'll install two copies of Snapchat, and then you will be able to sign in on two different accounts. And then finally, I wanna show you how to customize the lock screen on the device. So to customize the lock screen, you actually don't even have to leave the lock screen. So all you have to do is just hold down on the lock screen and then put in your pin code. And then from there, you can very much customize it. So if you want to change some of the icons at the bottom, you can do that. If you want to change the clock, we'll do that right now. So delete the first one and then go here and you can choose a different one. So I'm going to choose kind of this analog looking clock instead. You can even change the color of it. You can pick a gradient if you want to. So a lot of different abilities there. So that's really awesome. You can also grab these various apps here at the bottom. So maybe you don't want the phone icon in the corner. You can get rid of that and then pick any app of your choosing here. So if you wanna have Instagram there instead, it is now there in the corner. We'll go to done. And then now it's easily there. You can just swipe over and then access the phone. And then it will pull up that app straight from the lock screen at some point, eventually. There we go, there it is. <laughs> so that was my first time setting it up there. So I think that's why I was a little bit on the slow side. But overall, that customization is really awesome. And that is something that's new here with One UI 5. But this concludes my video on tips, tricks, and hidden features for the Samsung Galaxy A14 5G. I really hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new today. If you did, definitely give it a thumbs up. With all that said, this is Kevin here, 
and I'll see you in the next one. Take care and have a great rest of your day.